everybody. Welcome to another episode of The Gathering. Uh, we are back here in our studios. We're not at our home hot right now. We're back here doing our thing from our home. Uh, so tonight we have a great show lined up for you, a series of some great shows coming up for season two of The Gathering. Uh, we have with us a very special guest. We have Mr. Matt Warner from Paranormal, uh, Warner Paranormal Explorers. Uh, Matt's going to introduce himself, tell you a little bit about himself in just a second, but I wanted to go ahead and thank him again on the air. Uh, when we did the uh, season finale for season one, where we linked the Conjuring House and the Nickerson Sneed, Matt was up there with uh, J.W. Prather working on that uh, project they were doing up there. And he volunteered to jump in and help us out because we need another set of hands and actually ended up doing some live investigation on the show. So technically, this is Matt's second appearance with us on The Gathering. Uh, but Matt, once again, thank you for doing that. That was kind of an impromptu thing. And uh, you really didn't have to, but you jumped in and helped us out. And, and we greatly appreciate it, brother. But welcome to the gathering, Matt. Tell our viewers all about Matt, you know, Matt Warner and what you do and how you got your start. All right. Well, I appreciate you guys having me on. And, uh, you know, I would be a complete a-hole if I would have not helped out at that event. You know what I mean? Like, I I, I like helping out. That's what that's what we got to do. So that was a good time. Um, as we talked before the show, had some bugs, but we did have a good time doing it. Uh, so I've been in the paranormal, uh, under the radar most of my time. We're in the paranormal, like most people grew up around it. Just had some experiences as a child, always was into the horror movies and the the the, the fear has always been my favorite emotion because it's one of those ones you don't know how you'll respond to. It's either fight or flight. And as I grew up, I started watching more of the shows as they came about and I became more interested in the paranormal. I started grabbing as many books as I could and going to the library and taking out what books I could. And I always loved Stephen King's books. And to this day, Pet Cemetery is still my favorite book. And I just liked that aspect. So as the show started coming out, I realized that there was more to it and I could further research things. And I got books about local legends and local lore and I'd start exploring. And unfortunately growing up, I didn't have a lot of friends that were into this stuff. So I just kind of did it as a, a very low key hobby by myself. And as the years progressed and it became more prevalent, I started getting introduced to the right crowds of people. I became more public with it, started networking my ass off, and now I can't get enough of it, and I'm everywhere, and people are sick of hearing me talk, but here I am again. <laughs> yeah, I know. This is your third show you've done this week, isn't it? I mean, you did like uh, you did two other ones in the last two nights, I think, didn't you? Yeah, so so I have a, um, I, I co-host the podcast Booze and Booze uh, with a few of my friends. We do that every Wednesday night, and then last night I did the Cryptic Paranormal show with with the goos and those guys. And here I am tonight with you guys. So, man, that's awesome. Um, so Matt, you know, you got into this, I guess, probably around what, 20 years ago or so, I think when I was looking, yep. checking out your bio. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's another thing that was a, about, I got into it about 16 years ago and you know, it wasn't really, the shows were just starting to come out. So it wasn't as accepted. I mean, when you talk to your coworkers or your friends, they kind of gave you a weird look if you talked about paranormal stuff. So and my, my mic every once in a while does weird stuff. I'm going to have to replace this thing. But anyhow, sorry about that. Every once in a while, I sound like a demon. I swear I'm not possessed. I swear it's, it's, it's you know. Oh, you should just run with it. <laughs> just, I mean, you know, hey, it might bring more views. I don't know. But uh, but no, anyway, so, I mean, you know, the paranormal wasn't really as accepted back then, right? So, I mean, no. that was one of the struggles, too. People thought she was a weirdo if you did this shit. I've got incense burning, too. I apologize. Shit's ridiculous. <laughs> nah, no problem, man. I burn them all the time myself. Um, yeah, no, it wasn't accepted. And it's, and it's funny. I've had a great group of friends. Um, I will, hi, Aaron. That's my girlfriend, the most important human on earth. Thank you for being here as always. Um, I still have uh, my core group of friends that I grew up with and, and I'll meet up with them every once in a while. And I'll say to them, I say, you guys realize we have nothing in common. We never really did. We just went to the same school and I'm that weirdo that now travels and, and, and goes ghost hunting and they're, you know, playing poker and stuff on Saturdays. And I'm yeah, right? walking yeah. around in the dark there trying to go. talk to stuff. <laughs> but yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't really accepted. It was kind of frowned upon and, and just really looked at as weird. And now people look at us like we're some sort of superstars or something because we do this stuff. And it's, it's strange. Like, it's weird, isn't it? Yeah. 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 It's kind of crazy. And, you know, and I think, and this is something that I, I we kind of like talk about on the show every now and again, and, and a lot of people will throw off on the TV shows and, and I kind of have a kind of a little different thought on that. To me, the paranormal is there. It's kind of a double edged sword, right? I mean, the paranormal is where it is today and acceptance wise because of such a large viewership that watch those shows. Mm -hmm. So that's part of why people accept what we do so more readily. So I think when people constantly throw off on the shows, I kind of hate that because I think that, you know, yeah, there's good and bad, but that's entertainment. I mean, that's just, that's everything in life, right? That, so that's just is what it is. But, 
But, uh, you know, I think that you see a lot of that and, and I kind of hate that. So, yeah, I mean, the, the shows are it's it's a, a double edged sword and they are good because it brings exposure to locations. It helps bring money to locations, but it also gives the casual viewer a, a completely false sense of hope. That is true. You know, and you guys know you, you encounter these, you know, the guests and things when you do events and they expect 42 minutes of straight up action when it's like, dude, you could be here for 42 days and have nothing happen. Nothing happen. That's right. Yep. And, that's right. And, and that's exactly right. That's the, the double edged sword part of it. Right. And that's kind of the point that that I wanted to kind of talk a little bit about for just a minute, because the other thing is, and, and what's your take on this? Is it me or is everywhere we go supposed to have a demon? I cannot, I cannot tell you how much I hate the overuse of the word demon. Thank and you. It comes up all the time. And thank you. I speak with a lot of different people about this topic. Um, the, the chances of actually, uh, James, the, the chances of encountering a demon, I believe, are so slim that it'll probably never happen. And Absolutely. If you are, this is my theory, and I think a lot of people follow this theory, is if you're an a-hole in life, when you die, you're going to be the same way as a ghost. Exactly. Guys, guys what do I say all the time? We, we say that all the time, yeah. It makes I, sense, I right? I totally agree, man. Yeah. Absolutely, hundred percent, hundred percent. Yep. Yeah, and, and, but but the thing is, is the word "demon" is sensationalizing, and people like, oh, like instant, like, oh, I want, I want that experience, and yep. TV ratings. That's all it is. That's entertainment. Yeah, yep. it, it drives me absolutely crazy. And I think that's what people have to separate. They have to have separate entertainment from research and they have to have separate that from facts because facts is what we should be driving us in everything. You know, it's not just about you know, the EVPs, the meter hits. It's about the experiences. It's about the history. It's about putting all those pieces together. And it's about validating or disproving what is or isn't happening at a location. At least that's our stance. And that's how we approach our research and how we approach our investigations. But I think the negative thing is too, People don't understand something. They automatically go to it's a demon or it's dark and it's this and it's that. And a lot of times it's simply just negative leftover human energy that we're interacting with. And that's where I think a serious researchers have to step up and educate folks on, you know, what they're experiencing and, and literally try to help these people. So I imagine you guys handle that, that kind of stuff the same way. I've always, this bothers a lot of people, but I, I, I thrive off debunking everything. And so when we have people, I, Jennifer, when we have things happen, I scientifically approach everything. I want it. To, I want to debunk it as much as I believe I'm a very skeptical believer. I believe everything that happens to me, but everyone else has to prove themselves because I'm not going to take it for, for your word. I can't. Um, but yeah, being able to prove or disprove is everything for us in the field. And if there's any gray area where we can't prove it, I still can't say it's paranormal. But there are right, times right. when you just feel like this place is definitely haunted. We've all been there. We all know places. Oh, yeah. But yep. there's there's so much gray area. And no matter how many times or how much we pre, you know um, present for evidence, there's always going to be someone that doesn't believe us. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. And, you know, I kind of take a little weird approach on that, too. I, I totally agree. It's up to us to validate everything we present. We need to be able to show what steps we took to validate the information that we're presenting, right? And what steps we took to to debunk whatever it is that we're presenting. But I also think it's on the skeptic too, to prove me wrong. If I've taken yeah. all my steps and I've laid it all out for you and this is what I believe and this is the evidence I have to support it, I, I kind of feel like, you know, you as a skeptic then have to prove me wrong. So the burden of proof is on you just as much as it is on me, not not you, Matt, but I mean the skeptic. I'm no, not, I know exactly what you mean. That hardcore skeptic, right? Um, and uh, Secret James, I've seen uh, he threw up here that demons do exist. And yes, I don't doubt that. I, I truly do believe that demons exist. I, I believe that there's a lot of different negative entities out there. I think we could get way deep on elementals and all these different factions of, of different beings that are human and inhuman. I just don't believe that we have demons at every single street corner. And unfortunately, Hollywood and television and books and people's misunderstanding of the paranormal phenomena, I believe has led a lot of people to think there's a demon everywhere. So that was just answering secret James since he threw that up. There. But, yep. but uh, anything you want to add on that, Matt? I know we're kind of shocking like 12 things there, but <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I, I I've, um, I've had quite the lengthy conversations with Carl Johnson. For those of you that don't know Carl, he's one of the most world renowned de demonologists and yep. Carl's been doing it. Uh, I don't want to put the age to him, but he's been doing it for like 47 years or something insane like that. And in all the years that he's been doing this, he's encountered five demon cases. 
So that average is to be like one every eight years. That goes to show you how small of a scale demons actually are. And, are right. And he has this whole theory that the amount of demons roaming the earth or what have you, however you want to look at it, could fit on the pin of a head, the head of a pin. And that we as people manifest them as to what they become, you know? So it's a very small facet that we blew right. out of our own imagination. And I, I kind of like that, that theory. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. You know, and that kind of brings that kind of leads into another kind of little point with that too. Um, and, and I'm kind of curious to see what your thoughts are on this are, because I know what our team's thoughts kind of are. A lot of times when we encounter, you know, inhuman entities, we'll just go with that category. And that's a wide encompassing thing for people that have really studied different theories and different belief systems and different cultures. That's a wide umbrella. OK, when we're talking about inhumans. But when you deposit the energy, the intent that you bring to the investigation, the intent that you bring to that interaction has a direct reaction to that. In other words, if we have a place that has a negative energy there, the more negative energy we feed it the more negative energy is going to be reflected back to us. It's almost like a mirror. And if you go in with love and light and positive, you still may have some negative interactions, but you'll counter them a lot better than when you go in there with hardcore negative, you're going to get that negative reflected back just as hard. At least that's been our experience. Mm -hmm. So what's your thoughts kind of on that? I can see that making sense. Absolutely. Um, I know for myself as an empath and a, you know, a learning psychic medium, I don't even like referring to myself as X. I have no idea what's happening with myself I'm just slow I'm on a similar path. path. I understand. Out. Absolutely. Um, but I, I've always been able to sense energy in the room, whether heavy, light or other, I could always tell like what kind of, you know, vibe it had. And I've had moments in certain locations where I've encountered negative entities and they have affected me in that aspect. And I've become Absolutely. very negative. And then I start inadvertently provoking them and calling them pieces of shit or whatever. Yep. And I kind of step back because I don't like provocation. Um, but I will say if they were a dirtbag, I don't care because that's who they were. So, yeah, uh, yeah there's I'm a not, difference. There's a difference between staying on your ground with, with an entity and, and absolutely provoking for negative interaction. Those are two very different things, I think. And, and, I, and I agree. And I, I think the whole the whole term provocation gets brushed around a little too easily. And I've had these experiences in old jails. Actually, those are usually where I have the most negative experiences, which makes most sense. Well, yeah. sure. And I get I get irritated because I know that those those spirits were awful humans and they're still awful in the spirit realm and they're still messing with people in a negative fashion. So that makes me upset. And then I call them out on it. It does raise their awareness of me and then we have interactions. And I like that. So that's not disrespectful, in my opinion. Disrespectful would be walking into the house where grandma died and be like, hey, what happened to you, you old bitch? You broke your hip. Too bad. Sucks to be you. You know, like, yeah, right, I, right. I wouldn't do that. That's just that's just ignorant. But right. Oh, Aaron, go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> we um, had a we had a similar experience like that at Hinsdale House when we went there. That that place affected our whole team. So. Mm -hmm personality shifts and that's exactly what I was talking about and exactly what you're talking about Matt happened to us there um I don't provoke either by by nature that's just something I, it's not a skill set that I use a lot I'm like you if I feel I need to get on an entity because they're crossing that line or I need to push back I will uh within a safe amount of reason with you know me and that entity um like you uh, my path has changed a lot I'm starting to step into some of that mediumship ability myself and i don't use the term psychic for myself because i don't feel that's what i am but i totally get what you're saying and, and my team will validate this i've always been able to sense energy like you i can tell usually if it's male or female i can usually tell if it's good or bad and i sometimes get very direct information in investigations and that's developing more over the last few years for me so i totally can relate with what you're saying on that but at hinsdale house a weird thing happened we literally lost a little bit of time um, it was like we were having personality shifts uh, so much so that we shot a bunch of, you know, video and things that we were going to put up. But it's really unnerving when we watch it because it's so not us. It, wow. it, it, it's yeah, it's it's freaky. And um, we're going to go back to Hinsdale again just to see, yeah. just to see if the experience is different. But um, so I, I think you're absolutely right. Um, you know, depending on how open you are and how much you progress in your journey, I think the more that it affects you differently, whether you're empathic, you have some mediumship ability, where you can just connect with those energies. 
So yeah. how's that going as far as that journey for you, as far as discovering that mediumship side? I'm just curious to see, cause I'm kind of going through some the similar thing. So I'm curious to see what you're feeling with that. It's, it's been very interesting. So I, um, I've always known that I was empathic of some sort. And even that I used to kind of, I used to be the person big, all oh, these earthy, crunchy, hippie people. I don't understand any of that. It's ridiculous. And now I am that person and I cringe <laughs> myself. Um, but yeah, it's. I'm yeah. laughing with you. Same boat. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's so bizarre. You know, I wake up smiling and happy every day. I'm like, this is weird. It's like I'm drugged up on something, but. Um, yeah. I'm so, burning incense and playing with rocks. I mean, you know, yeah. I I've get got, it. Yeah. I've got crystal all over this freaking place. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, no, I am. Um, I've always known I was empathic. I could always sense energies and I was cool with that. And throughout the years I've had people say, Oh, you have all these abilities. And it's like, Nope, that's I don't want to see dead people. I'm, I'm fine. Just being ignorant to everything. That's how I like to live my life. It's much easier. And earlier this year I went through some stuff and I had a friend of mine, Kenna, who's my, one of my best friends and co-host of booze and booze. She reached out to me and she said, you know, I, I can sense that you're dealing with a lot of stuff and, she has all sorts of abilities herself that she's learning and her mentor is helping her with. So she said, I'd like to do some like Reiki and energy work on you. And I was like, you know, I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever, whatever you want to do, that sounds fine to me. And she's down in Atlanta. So it's going to be all remote. And, and I said, you know what, if, if she believes in this stuff, I'll believe that she can help me. So we did this remote spell work type of stuff. Right. And I'll tell you, man, I felt all this, energy just come off my body. Like it radiated out of me. It was the strangest thing. It was all this negative scrubbing of my life. And I got up the next day and I was like, what the hell happened? Like I, I felt so happy and just calm and in a very light sense of myself. And people started noticing it. Like what, what's going on with you? I was like, what? And they're like, well, you might grouch today. I was like, I don't know what happened. And it just changed me. And she's been working with me uh, to turn me around. And, and my positivity is absolutely through the roof now. Everything is, every day is a good day. And she's been working with me. Her mentor has been working with me, you know, very lightly. Cause I'm, I, like I said, I'm, I don't want to say I'm right. scared of it, but I'm not ready for all that responsibility. I'm still an idiot right. when it comes to stuff. So I, I, I realized that, but she warned me and she said, you know, as you keep progressing into ghost hunting further, now that your abilities are cracking through the wall, so to speak, you're going to have some changes and it's going to get intense. And I was like, yeah, whatever you say, I believe you. And it has. And back in July, I was at uh, the Wilson castle for the first time. And I had my first actual psychic experience where I went from just sensing energy. I actually saw energy and I actually then saw a spirit like with my eyes. And then I bugged it. I bugged right out. I wasn't ready for all that stuff. And that's what I, I didn't want yet, but that's now coming through and I'm seeing it much more frequently now. And it's, you know, less scary, but it is, it's coming whether I want to stop it or not. So I'm just trying to ride it out, see how it goes. Yeah. And I brought that up. Cause like I said, I mean, I, I'm literally experiencing the same thing in the last couple of years for me. I mean, my team will tell you, I mean, guys, I mean, they'll, they'll definitely agree with that. I, I'm, I'm experiencing exactly the same kind of thing you are where it's not what I wanted. It's not the path I thought was going to be my path, but it's emerging as my path. So I'm embracing it and I'm trying to learn as I go. So it's kind of reassuring to hear somebody else that isn't, you know, labeling themselves a full blown psychic or whatever, a medium saying, Hey, I'm experiencing kind of the same thing you are. And so it's validating for me to, to hear somebody else having a similar, similar path and a similar experience to, to what I am. So that's, that's, that's pretty cool. Uh, Michelle, Al, you guys got any questions? I'm going to pop through the comments here. Real well, quick. I was, I was just going to say, like you always say, Matt, that, um, the more you do this, the more you open up, I think. You know, you this mat or that match. You got two mats. You're gonna have to specify. <laughs> that. You. Just call me Sorge if you want. There you Sorge. Go. Okay, Sorge. Like Sorge usually says, the more you do this, the more you start opening up to things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I truly believe that. I mean, the more you throw yourself in this environment, the more opportunity there is for for spirit to communicate with you, and the more opportunity there is for spirit to to put you in the direction and path you need to be. And, you know, we're very blessed on our team. You know, I've got a uh, very good, we have a very good uh, psychic medium. That's our lead psychic. So having her as my coach and mentor has been really good for me, not just on my paranormal journey, but on this new journey with me. Um, and of course, you know, we've got some other ones like Sky Ray that we work with quite a bit. That That's also a fantastic mentor. So mm -hmm. um, it's great to have those people that can influence you. But you guys got any questions if you want while I'm looking here through the comments real quick? Uh, yeah, I got one that uh, you said you, you grew up 
reading a lot of Stephen King. Mm-hmm. Um, did you ever read any Hans Holzer? Because I've, I, I I've, I've got a lot of his books in the bookcase right over there. I've got the yeah. giant ghost book. That was the first one I ever got. That that was mine too. I I checked it out in elementary school in the library. So yep, that was when I was referencing all the books I started getting into. Those were the first ones I got into. Was Hans Holzer? Yeah, yeah. He's he he knew what he was talking about. He was way ahead of his time. And and obviously I have a lot of the Warrens books. And yep. whenever I get it, now that I'm older and I know who to look for, I I I I, ser- I seek those things out everywhere I go. Yeah. So did you have any paranormal experiences when you were younger? So I had a couple of like weird experiences growing up. I remember the earliest memory I have, um, I was somewhere between like six, uh, probably, probably probably between like eight and 10. And I remember that I'm, I'm trying to remember the date cause I was in my old bedroom at the house and I used to have the doorway into the hall, like slightly cracked open. And I woke up in the middle of the night one night and I saw a shadow standing behind the door, but it was only above the door. It was only like waist up above the door. So there was nothing below. And I didn't have anything on the back of the door. And I'm, I'm looking at this thing and it's like, what the, and you know, it's like, you're a kid. You're like, no, it's no big deal. You just roll over, you go back to sleep and, and pay it. No, never mind. And um, when I was a little bit older in my new bedroom, I was, I must've been 15 or so. It was late night and I was watching TV, but the TV wasn't directly in front of my bed. It was over at an angle and I was watching a movie. And all of a sudden, this this silver head appeared in the TV screen looking directly at me and, like, following me with its eyes, blinking. And I was like, what the frig is going on? Like, you know, you do one of these, like, all right, it's late, it's late. And I just turned the TV off. I was like, I'm not doing this right now. I don't want to know what that is. I think that was – that wasn't – that was a couple years after my grandfather had passed, and he was the first family member that passed away. So I I wonder if it was him because for whatever reason I felt like it was, but it spooked me out too. So I kind of – let that go. And um, my dad's parents, uh, my nana and grampy, they live next door, like through the woods, no river, but just through the woods to grandmother's house. And <laughs> I hung out there almost every day. And she was the one that would buy me all these horror movies when I was a kid that I shouldn't have because she was a great nana. But that house was haunted. They, my great grandmother passed away in that house. So we always believed it was her. But I never had any experiences. But my aunt, my grandmother, my grandfather, they would always tell me the experiences they had in that house and they'd see shadows and hear things. And I never saw anything, unfortunately. I wish I had, but that place was haunted too. So I've kind of been around it my whole life. Uh, but the experiences were never super profound as I was as I was younger, like until I was in my teens. Awesome. Yeah. I I growing up, I never I never really had any paranormal experiences either, but I, I was always just interested in reading about them and and until i found out you know matt had the team uh i i really didn't even have a paranormal experience until like the second or third investigation we went on so i mean yeah and, and for me um I, you know i went all the way into my 30s i had never had a paranormal experience i had nothing happen to me and then i saw a full apparition i mean mm-hmm. it's just you know I tried to do like you do, you know, you you try to assign, you know, rationale to it and you start going, oh, well, what I saw was because I was tired or overactive imagination or whatever. But, you know, I know it was an apparition because the place was abandoned and it's a long story. But bottom line is there was nobody lived in there for 40 years. There was no power. There's no reason an elderly woman is standing in the window looking at me at sunset. And she was so but she vanished right before my eyes. That was my first experience. And I went back to that place again and had a second experience. And I wasn't ghost hunting because I wasn't into any of this stuff. I, I didn't disbelieve. I just had never had an experience. So it was like, well, that's cool. That's your cup of tea. It's just not my thing. So, you know, that was for me the, the hey, this is out here. And this is that moment that dragged me in. And from that moment on, I became obsessed with trying to really prove that it's people that have experiences and it's not a phenomena. 16 years later, literally hundreds of investigations all over the country. I can no longer say that because the experience I've had, I, I don't know. I can't say for sure what it is we communicate but with, but there's definitely times we interact with something intelligent. It's undeniable. Um, and we have the, you know, the experiences and the proof to, to validate that. So I can no longer say what I what, what started me on this journey. And I think for me, the longer I'm in this field, the longer I'm in this journey, the more I realize that I don't know and that I need to learn 
more and understand more. And I find myself researching other cultures and researching ancient civilizations and things that I never thought about before trying to understand some of the things we interact with in, in you know, in our, in our work that we do. So uh, it's just, it's just interesting to always get, I love getting different perspectives from you know, other investigators and, and hear their journeys. So it's always cool. I'm going to touch on a comment real quick here. Uh, Seeker James had said, guys, that he don't really approve of provoking spirits, especially negative spirits, because negative spirits can harm, scratch, hurt, etc. And I just wanted to say, for what I was saying, just for clarification, I think there is a very big difference between literally going in with the intent to negatively do something negative to spirits. I kind of look at it this way, and I'm speaking for myself. I'm not speaking for anybody else. Um, I wouldn't walk into Walmart and walk up and just slap the cashier, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to walk into a haunted location and just slap a spirit. Now, the same token, if I'm in Walmart and a guy comes up on me and starts really giving me a bunch of crap and I can't back him off or back him down, I'm going to engage. So I treat spirit exactly the same way. I will set boundaries. And if I have to push back, I will. But I absolutely don't believe in negative provoking with the intent to harm or with the intent to facilitate negative activity. So that's just clarification I wanted to make on the comments that the James had made. I absolutely agree with what he said. So I agree with that. Uh, anybody else got anything they want to ask real quick before we move on to the next segment? And we'll talk about the clip that Matt provided next. But uh, you guys got anything else you want to ask him about his background before we move on? Yeah, I'm, I'm ready to move on. <laughs> All right. All right, Matt, so you sent a clip for us to uh, go over. So before I play the clip for the audience, why don't you kind of tell us where you were, what was going on, and kind of give us a little background on what, what we're looking at. All right, so this this clip was from my third, third trip this summer to Wilson Castle, which is in Proctor, Vermont. Wilson Castle was built in the late 1860s. There's very little known history on the, on the place. It's an absolutely gorgeous location. Uh, a friend of mine, Steve Brott, was the one that started doing ghost hunts there and investigations and tours five or six years ago. And earlier this year, uh, my co-host, my other co-host on Booze and Booze, Mike Hatcher, uh, formerly of Dead Republic Paranormal, he reached out to me and he said, you know, we're, we're going to be going to do a documentary. He's wondering if you'd like to join us as a guest investigator. Now, to me, that's phenomenal because I don't have to do anything. I that's show awesome. up. I act the fool on camera and I go home. I don't have to edit. I don't have to see anything. I'll see at the premiere in the red carpet. You know what I mean? So that is the perfect scenario for me. So I was like, absolutely. Where is it? And they said, Vermont. No, no big deal. I'm there. So I was introduced to the castle at that point and I fell in love with this location. And it's the, the owner is an absolute amazing sweetheart of a woman. And every time I've been there, it feels like I've come home. It's just welcoming, but it is haunted. Wow. There is so much activity up there every time we go. Um, so I went up in July, we filmed the documentary. That's when I had my psychic experience, which can't really talk about because the documentary is not out yeah, yeah. Understood. Um, but after that, I went up uh, about a month later with my friend, Jason Baker, who's my photographer and one of my good friends. We went up there to do some photography, scout the location for a future event. Then, Mike and a psychic friend of his, Rini, were setting up to do another documentary follow-up at Wilson Castle with you and I research out of uh, New York. So it went up again, and that's when this, this actual um, occurrence happened. So we're up there. We're doing all kinds of different experiments, and myself, <clears throat> Rini, who is a psychic medium, we're up on the third floor of the castle. Everybody's up on the third floor of the castle. What we were trying to do is there's – Children's spirits on the third floor that we believe like to play hide and seek. Oh, I got My very first time I was at the <clears throat> castle, I was walking around. I had just gotten there. I was walking around doing Facebook Live crap like I do. And I'm walking around the castle. Everybody's outside. I'm on the third floor. I'm going to walk into a bedroom. Right before I get to the threshold, from behind the door, at the doorknob height, so three-ish feet, there's a little comet of energy that shoots out from behind the door. Broad daylight. And I'm like, holy shit. So I go in the room and there's nothing there, of course. And I'm like, you know, I saw you. And when you go in the room to the left, there's another door that leads to another room and it keeps going. So I do believe that these kids are, the kids are up there. At least one kid is up there playing games. So this very same night, before we went up there, I was doing the same thing. I was Facebook Live walking around. I said, hey, this is where I saw last time. And then there's a noise right behind the door. Oh, wow. Like, Man. So I go behind the door. There's nothing there. 
Now, fast forward, we're in this bedroom, myself and Rini, and they have a camera, uh, Sarai doing camera work, sitting in there. We're all witnessing with our eyes, shadow movement in the hallway, balls of energy lighting up on the floor. And it just, I instantly became so drained that I nodded off. Now, when I go, son, I drink bang like there's no tomorrow. I am so <laughs> caffeinated that I shouldn't be able to sleep, period, ever again. And I'm sitting there, and I did this, and I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And at that moment, Rini says, you all right? I said, I am just completely drained. Like, I am toast. I'm done. I'm done. She's like, I am too. I've never felt like this. My thought is, whatever these spirits were, they were taking everything from me. Our batteries yeah. kept dying. The batteries in the camp mm -hmm. that this where I was using died twice right in front of us. So I go downstairs. I go into the command central, and um, the guy, one of the guys, John, goes to me. He goes, what's the matter? Your eyes look terrible. I was like, dude, I'm, I'm going to bed. I'm toast. He's like, what do you mean? I said, I am going to bed now. I'm done with this. Like, I'm, I have nothing <laughs> left to give anybody. I can't. I need to go to sleep. Yeah. And – and everyone's like, well, where are you going to sleep? And I'm looking at the DVR. The DVR setup's got a bunch of different cameras. I said, well, I'm sleeping in that room tonight. The room I chose to sleep in was the is the bride's room, and that is one of the most active rooms in the whole house. And it's the first time I was there, it had a very negative feel to it, a very negative energy and an angry energy that I didn't care for. But I was like, you know what? I will sleep in an open grave at this point because I'm exhausted. <laughs> So I said, I'm that's when you know that. you're tired, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It doesn't matter when I'm tired. Just leave me alone. You know? So, um, I said, uh, as Rini said, well, where are you, you're going to sleep in there? I said, yeah. She said, well, if you put my air mattress up there, I'll sleep in that room too. I said, that's fine. I said, are you coming up now? She said, nope, whatever. I go upstairs, put her air mattress in. I get in my, my sleeping bag. I sleep like, you know, Dracula in a coffin, just dead. She comes up. <laughs> She's not watching, so I can say this. She comes up like 20 minutes later. I'm I'm basically asleep. She's like having a like a toddler style tamp temper tantrum, slamming her blankets around, trying to get comfortable. I'm like, and I just I was like, what are you doing? And she's like, she's like, what's the matter? I was like, you're making so much freaking noise. I'm just trying to sleep. Like, and and you can see this on camera. We watched the next day. She's tossing, slamming blankets. It's the funniest thing. But I, I I quickly fall asleep. I get up the next morning. And I get up and I'm folding up my sleeping bag and, and but I, I, my chest is killing me. Like as if I, I, I kept telling him, I felt, I figured I kicked in the chest by a donkey. It, it hurts so bad. And I couldn't understand it. She's like, well, you were snoring. I was like, no, I wasn't. She's like, you were snoring all night. I said, well, I don't snore. And I have people you can ask that will tell you I don't snore. I'm proud of that. Right? <laughs> don't tell me I snore. That's not something I want in my reputation. So we went downstairs, we're talking, telling everybody, oh, you know, like, oh, how'd you sleep? I was like, you know, I actually slept okay. Apparently I was snoring, but I said, my chest is really hurting. And I'm like, oh, we got, you know, let's look at the DVR footage. No problem. Now we're going over the DVR footage 20 minutes after I've fallen asleep or so. And you see, and now I, I, I don't care. I'll take flack. I, I believe a lot of orbs cannot be easily written off. I don't care what people say. Yeah, dust and, yep. dust and bugs the majority of the time, but there are some that you cannot discredit. Absolutely. They'll Especially be when they're linked with experiences or visible anomalies you witness with yourself. I and mean, that's always been our view on them. I'm not big on orbs, but there are ones you absolutely can't discredit. That's And that's exactly how I feel about it. And this room was active with orb activity long before we went to bed. And it didn't bother me because I said, it doesn't matter. The whole house is like this. I know what the house is like. I've been here a bunch. So we're watching the footage and, you know, you see a couple of different little, little blips. And then out of the bathroom in the bedroom, you get this pulsing white orb come flying out and it blasts me right in the chest. And then 10, 20 seconds later, it shoots right up out of my chest. I can't say that that's definitively what it was, but that to me is direct correlation to why my chest hurt. It seems to me like a spear came out there, messed up my, my chest somehow. And also could have caused me to snore, mess with my breathing. So absolutely. I uh, that together. Before I play that, uh, I'll just mm -hmm. let you know. I mean, I it was your the YouTube clip is what you know you had up there. And I actually had to to get it in stringer, like you and I talked about, man. I had to actually screenshot it to bring it in and um all that stuff. But so I did take the liberty because I love to debunk stuff. Not that I was trying to debunk you, and please don't take that wrong. 
but I, I wish can't you, I help want it. You, to. you have to. I, I can't to. help it when it comes to you know evidence. I have to always try and look for myself, and and I'll never like blast somebody because that's just ridiculous. But I, I have to look. I, I can't help it, and especially video. I'm a video guy. I do a lot of video editing, a lot of video stuff, and I love video. So I brought it into Premiere Pro, and I actually stepped it frame by frame. And you can always see the telltale markers when you blow it up, if it's bugs or orbs. None of those markers are here. What is fascinating to me about this, and when we play the clip, everybody will get to see it. There's a trail that follows this thing as it hits your body. And then the same exact trail appears as it exits your body and goes in a totally different direction. So you have an object that is visible on camera from more than one direction as it enters. It travels in an onlinear path. It maintains a consistent size and it has a trail like a comet coming in and out. I got to say that to me, very compelling piece that, that you're seeing. Yeah. And that's why I said to you in the email, man, that's a cool clip um, yeah. because it, it is. And, and you validated even further for me because you had an experience. Even though you were asleep, you woke up with chest pain. It's validated. You know, I mean, to me, because anytime you have an audio anomaly that you can put with you know, either, you know, uh, environmental data information or physical feelings or visible. You saw it yourself. Yeah. You know, a hundred percent. So let's go ahead and play it and let's see what, you know, we'll talk a little you bit. Know, about I don't have a question, play. but I think he's gone. Yeah. He's, uh, he's on the phone and he's uh, working his part-time job. So he may be, he may be hiding right now. I don't, I don't know. It's Al. We have a saying on our team in case you didn't know, Matt. Um, and it's, it's hashtag damn it, Al. <laughs> because it's wrong, we blame Al. So you'll often see on our stuff, hashtag damn it Al. This is a damn it Al typical moment. I'm going to go ahead and play your clip while, we're, while Al's figuring out what the hell he's doing. Someone goes into my right chest, there. Yeah. right into me. And then like a minute later, it comes bouncing out of me. There it goes, right out of my chest. Yeah, there it goes, wow. yep. That's what it was. Yeah, and see, that's what I'm saying. I mean, it is such a defined trail as it comes in and a defined trail that exit in a completely different direction. It, it, honestly, it's it's one of the, the more compelling ones I've seen um, uh, of something like that, where you have an experience to validate it. Uh, the only other one I have similar to an experience that is that I saw it visibly with myself and we captured it on camera. So I saw it, it affected me and it was on camera. So it was seen two ways. This is the same kind of thing. You've seen it two ways, especially the physical validation, man. That's cool. That's cool stuff. Really cool stuff. Uh, when's the documentary coming out? Can you say, or is it that documentary? So the first documentary, which is called, um, haunting of Wilson. K uh, what the hell is it called? Goodwill haunting. Is what it's called. Oh, cool! A uh, little, little cool. play on words. So that's going to be out. That that should be out. God, it was supposed to be out already, but it's taking more time. They're they're getting closer and closer to having that done, and that's going to be available on Amazon Prime, I believe, right when it comes out. Excellent. I'll be sure to share all that. And then this other documentary where that occurrence happened. The first part of the series was released. I want to say a week or two ago, and that was put out by UNI Research, and I believe it's just through their YouTube channel. That's awesome, though, man. That's cool. Uh, so they're breaking that down. They're going to do a season two at Wilson Castle next year that we'll all be a part of filming. And basically what we're trying to do is unravel the history that no one knows of the castle. Fantastic, man. Cool stuff. Really cool. And I'm assuming you're using that's where your psychic parts are coming in. The psychics are helping you guys make connections and that kind of thing. If, if you're able to talk yes, about and, it, I don't know. But. Yeah, that's, that's what a lot – like the research has been – virtually impossible to do one because of covid and local libraries and things aren't letting people in yeah and i've noticed that the historical society up there and like the the records hall they've been kind of sketchy about letting oh, us yeah. get there and i don't understand what it's almost like they have something to hide it, it makes no sense but even going through newspaper clippings there's not much written about the place and it's been there for 150 years so we don't really know the history and i'm one of those people i find it hard to believe that what a psychic says about a location, you have to, you could give, give me concrete proof. I'm not going to believe you. Like, right. I could have 10 psychics come in and tell me the same thing. I'm like, well, can you show me written anything, pictures, any right. like, actual concrete proof? Just because you said it doesn't mean I'm going to believe it. So it's going to be a long journey, I think, in terms of proving that to a lot of people. So that's half the fun, though.
Absolutely. And that's why you know, we, that's how we use our psychics. They help us get that information. And then we use our actual historian who went to school to be a historian to help us research and find the proof that backs up and validates. And, and our psychic loves that. You know, both of our psychics do. They love that. That's a challenge for them because it validates and proves what they're connecting with. So I, I love when I hear other researchers kind of take that same approach of, hey, you know, yeah, you've got this and I'm not doubting you have this experience, but now let's find the hardcore proof that helps back that up. So cool stuff. Uh, we had a Seeker James did ask a question. So this is a good topic to hit real quick. Uh, I believe, Matt, I think you have a couple of these. I've got a few. <laughs> yeah, I, I hate dolls. dolls. I hate dolls. I hate them. <laughs> um, everywhere I go, there's a there's a friggin' doll, and I'm always compelled to hold them and play with them because there's something wrong with me because I, I hate the damn things. I'm terrified of them. But anyways, so and and our psychic owns one or two hundred dolls herself that she likes to bring with us and torment me with. So you have a couple. So Matt, let's talk. Let's talk on the dolls real quick. So I have. Uh... I have way more dolls than a 39-year-old heterosexual male should own. I have probably 30 of them throughout the – this is my living room. And no one comes to visit. It doesn't – you know, I don't wonder why anymore. Um, but I do have um, quite the collection. And I don't necessarily call them haunted. I, I like the term enchanted because they're not all scary. So my big – I'll bring her down. I'll give her the attention. And I'll give her – I'll give you guys the story. Even though I know Erin's going to be shaking her head because she's like, I've heard She actually thing. said bad idea. Ha, ha, ha. I'm guessing about the discussion of haunted dolls is, is my guess. And then she said that uh, um, um, uh, Ameline, Ameline is her yep. favorite lass. Yep, that, this is her. Oof. Oh, and you're that's... saying that she's enchanted and not haunted? Because she's uh, she, scaring, this one, this one listen, is, she's I'm scaring like the shit out of me just looking at her. So, <laughs> so yeah, this 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 gal's haunted. So what I'm going to do is I'll give you the I'll give you the breakdown of her. She she loves attention, so this is good for me and my surroundings. <laughs> so a friend of mine had this left in the back seat of his pickup truck, and he doesn't know how long it was there. He came upon it one day and it was just sitting in there, and it freaked him out as it should. Yeah. So he called me and he knew I was into this kind of stuff, and he said, "Would you?" take this thing. I said, absolutely. You know, let me know. And he said, well, I'm going to talk to my wife, see what we should do. I don't hear from him for a month or two. I totally forget about it. He calls me one Saturday morning. And he says, if you still want that, you got to come and get it. I'm going to burn it. I said, all right, well, I'll come get it right now. What's going on? And he said, well, and I believe it was his mother-in-law passed away. His One of his good friends committed suicide. His whole family was fighting. Everything was going wrong ever since this thing came into his life. So I said, yeah, I'll go get it. No problem. And I went and met with him. He had never taken it out of his truck. It still was there. I went and saw it, and I was like, all right, little little eerie. That's cool. Saged his truck for him and everything, make him feel better. Now, on his street, there is like a, a drug house, and they would sell drugs out of it. And he and his wife had seen them making deals before, and he believes it was put by them as a warning, like, don't snitch. No. So whenever I get something new haunted or enchanted, I take it home and do nothing with it until I go on Facebook Live to reveal it to people and do we do like live readings with you know equipment around it and just see what we get. And I always have a bunch of different psychics come in and read the room, which is fun. So I brought her home, thought nothing of it, and for about three or four days she was just sitting in here. And during that time, I didn't feel well. I didn't feel like myself. I was very irritable. Uh, more so than usual, just didn't feel right. So I came home one day from work. I said, all right, I got to just do this live and get this over with. So we go Facebook Live, a bunch of people watching, a bunch of different psychics, and people are researching. And this noose that's on this doll is an actual noose. It's very functioning. I could never make something like this. And I was told by more than one person that this is some sort of binding spell to keep the spirit with the doll and not to take it off because then, you know, unleashing hell or what have you. So I was like, okay, I'll leave it. Because oddly course, enough, I was kind of want, I was going to ask you if that was some type of binding because that was my would, first instinct. I would whirl it around like a lasso, but I'm not going to do that. <laughs> so I mean, you guys are obviously a lot more rational, me and your friend, because I would have not only burnt the doll, but I would have burnt my truck too. So <laughs> I mean, I, you know, you seem like you guys are a lot more rational with this than I am. I really like putting myself through as much shit as possible. It's all part of my experiences. And if I make it through the other side, it's something I can talk about. And here we are. <laughs> so as we're doing the show, like a lot of my viewers, what they love to do is research. So they figured out that this doll is a granny kin. And it was made in 19, late 50s, like 57. And it was a line of dolls made to look like grandmothers. And she looked like Mrs. Howell from Gilligan's Island, all done up and pretty. And obviously she's aged like a real old woman would. She's got, you know, the dead wonky eye and everything. And Ugh. yeah. 
So I'm doing the session. I got, I've got the obelisk at the time. I've since gotten rid of the obelisk. I don't really believe much of it, but it was very spot on that night with a lot of things. And Ameline actually came through. Oh, and it's, wow. a French, it's a French word that means hard worker. But I, I heard the word and I said, all right, I'm going to call you that. That's going to be your name. Another word I got was water and New Orleans. So now I've got mm. a French word, water and New Orleans. I'm instantly thinking voodoo. Yes. And it's I've nope. since been told by numerous people that this is a voodoo curse or hex held held with this doll. So I as as we're doing this, the energy in the room, it kind of felt like being in a Gravitron, the old carnival game. Like it just was swirling around and I could feel it. And I was home alone, which I am most of the time anyways. Well, not anymore, now I got all the ghosts here, but <laughs> I was sitting, I was like, all right, the room's getting a little ballistic. And don't worry, Aaron, she's not coming. So I had one of the psychics message me. She goes, uh, the, your, your house is crazy energetic right now. I said, yes, I can feel it. I know that. And not long after that, the broadcast killed, the, the computer died, all, everything just shut down. And now I'm just sitting here quiet alone. And I'm like, all right, what the hell's going on? So I fire the computer back up, get everything going. And the room completely mellowed out. Like it, it was like they opened the window and it just all went outside. Wow. And what the same psychic message. And she goes, the energy's fine now, isn't it? I said, yep completely fine and so i was talking with her after the fact and by giving this doll the attention that she craves i'm good we're good we coexist i have her up on the front front row seat right there for the tv she i talk to her as if she's here because she is in some fashion and most of the times we're good now the reason aaron's not really a big fan of her is because aaron didn't necessarily believe in the power of haunted objects and when I first introduced her to her via FaceTime, she didn't listen. She's like, oh, she's creepy and, you know, said some un unsavory things about her. I said, you know, can, whether you believe it or not, please don't do that because I live here. <laughs> I don't want to battle that later. And it, it was a little uncomfortable, but nothing crazy. I had a psychic, a different psychic friend reach out to me one day, just out of the blue. And she said, oh, you feeling all right? I said, you know, not really. And she said, well, do you mind if I try to remote read you and your house? I said, go right ahead. I still don't understand how people do that. So I was like, yeah, whatever, you know? And she goes, there's a, a really angry female spirit that I cannot read in your house. It's pacing back and forth. You know what that would be? And I said, I don't know. I said, oh, I said, is it, is it Ameline? And I showed her a picture. She said, that's exactly it. And she goes, she's angry. And she's jealous about something. I said, well, got a new girlfriend, doesn't really care for her. She said, that's exactly it. She, said, she has to make amends or it's never going to be good. And things are going to get worse for you. I said, okay. So I made them do like the little like, you know, just be respectful of her and, and, and things have been pretty good. Um, I was doing a live Ouija session on here one night with Aaron. This one came through and started and just took over the whole show and was, you know, she was being good, but active. So I know she's got a ton of energy to her. I also bring her to all the conventions I go to because people like this stuff. I'm not like, oh, yeah. this, this yeah. is an Annabelle. You want to hold her? That's fine. That's on you. You deal with it. Yeah, right. You know, yeah. People, people are scared of her, but they do love the, you know, the selfie opportunity. So I let that happen. Sure. When I was up in Portland, we did um, Parafest, Maine, up in Vassalboro back in October. And my daughter and I were up. <clears throat> we did the convention, brought her. My daughter and I just sitting eating pizza. And I get a message from a different psychic because I know a lot of them. She goes, You know, you got this, you got this energy with you right now. And it's, it's not an attachment, but it's, it's kind of an angry, female energy. I said, what do you think it is? And she goes, I don't know, but it's been with you for a while. Now she's in the Jeep outside. Oh, wow. So I sent her a picture. I said, what do you think? She said, oh, dude, dude, what is that? No, you, you can't have that. I said, well, she's mine and I've had it for a while. And I ain't getting rid of her. She's like, I know you're not, but you should, you shouldn't have that. She's, she's with you all the time. And I said, I, I believe it. I'm trying to give her attention and let her be cool. And I've not been harmed by her, but she's, she was funny because she's like, uh, I know you won't get rid of it, but you really need to get rid of that. And you got some other stuff you shouldn't have too. And I was like, well, that's what I do. So that night when I came home with her, <clears throat> I'm bringing everything into the kitchen. I'm in the living room now. When I'm in the kitchen, I hear two people talking out here. And then I heard a child laugh. Obviously, there's no one here. So I poke in and there's nothing going on. She is the, pa the matriarch of this place. I think because she was gone, all the other spirits felt fine and we're having a party without her. And she came back and everyone fell back into place. And wow. th there's there's a ton of energy in here. And that same psychic, when my friend Kenna was up here, Kenna walked through that doorway in here and she goes, oh, God, no. And I said, what? 
there is too much energy in this room. I said, oh, that's fine. She's like, how do you live here? I said, I'm, I'm used to it. And she got on the phone, FaceTime with that psychic. And she's like, is this the thing you worry about? She said, get away from it. Don't even get near that. Don't even get near it. So Ameline has got a spot forever in my heart. And uh, <laughs> she, she, she is haunted. So long story short, James, yes, I believe in haunted dolls. I have one. I love her very much. I and James, <laughs> I was letting you tell tell your story there. I didn't want to interrupt it with with comments, but James did say that he was picking up that there is he feels two spirits attached to that particular doll of yours. He also said uh, earlier while you were talking that he believes it is a uh, doll around a girl around nine years old, but there's also a woman attached to the doll. Interesting, um, because you did say that you felt kind of the matriarchal energy with her in reference to her dolls. So that's kind of interesting. Um, so I'm sure that you get a lot of different reads on that from different psychics. So you have a collection of haunted items. Do you have anything else that's haunted, or is it just, you know, my favorite thing, friggin' creepy dolls? <laughs> I so I have I have stuff all over this room. I have um, I have five or six different Ouija boards that have attachments to them. Those have not really proven themselves very much. I did have a I, I bought one a week or two ago. It came wrapped. <laughs> it came wrapped in this protective shroud with all these you know, sigils on it. And I kind of laughed about it. I think I paid for a story, but when I took it out and we were using it on a Facebook live, this, this frigging thing was moving. And I've not had much experience with Ouija boards in terms of them doing anything. Right. But this thing felt like it had fish in line to the planchette and it was just pulling and doing its own thing. And I got, I, I actually started to feel uncomfortable. So I, I ended it. So it was either that or something else in this room, which could be anything, but so I got a, a, a few Ouija boards uh, I've got a place like at a bunch of dolls. I've got um, got a rocking horse in the middle of my living room <laughs> that has energy attached to it. And I, the, how that came to fruition was I went and picked up this little replica Robert the doll. Robert, yeah, oh yeah. So for those of you that don't know Robert the doll down in St. Augustine, Florida, easily as as haunted and and majestic and mysterious as Annabelle. Absolutely. There are some basic rules that when you go there, you uh, you ask permission to take pictures of him, whatever. The woman that bought this doll, she bought one when she was down there, asked permission, did all her thing, wound up donating the doll to an auction. And then her cousin lives down there, so she said, can you bring me a little replica Robert back when you come up? Something happened, and they just got it, and they didn't do the precautionary steps and the superstitious steps. She brought this doll. This doll was never out of this bag. This is how it came. She brought it into her house sat it in a chair that was kitty cornered in her dining room about a day later she had this big painting of um leonardo raphael one of those not the ninja turtle but the the artist yeah, on her <laughs> the wall. Ninja turtle, yeah i like it <laughs> and it they heard a loud crashing they went in and this painting had fallen off the wall at an angle landed on the chair covering up the doll wow, which wow. by physics is impossible sure and she is extremely psychic she's like her whole family lineage is deeply rooted in psychic medium so she she's not full of crap right she wouldn't touch this thing she had black salt around it and everything she's like you want this come get us i'll be right there and it's funny because i was actually heading to the conjuring house that day i was like let's just make this a great day you know I'll bring all this haunted shit with me and go to the conjuring house but <laughs> why not why yeah. wouldn't you <laughs> why, why not? so i picked this thing up and while i'm there she goes oh uh my daughter lives across the street. She has a rocking horse she needs to get rid of. And I said, what do you mean? She goes, well, it was with the house when they bought it. And they mm. no one likes to go near it. It's in the basement. They just they, they sense a male energy around it, and they get uncomfortable. They don't want it. I was like, well, I'll go look at it. I'm not buying it, but if you need to get rid of it, I'll look at it. And so we go in the basement, and we're looking at it. And I do this really hokey thing where I kind of like put my hands out to feel the energy and, and it works. I look like an idiot, but it, it works for me. No, so I totally get it. Yep. I'm like, you know, cooking up everything and, and it feels like there's something. So I was like, I'll take the thing, whatever. And, you know, I, so now I have a rocking horse in the middle of my living room. But when I brought that home in this Robert the Doll, <clears throat> doing Facebook live stuff, using fit, uh, dowsing rods and some other things, I thought I was interacting with a child spirit from the, the rocking horse, which is interesting that James is talking about uh, two spirits being attached to, to Ameline. After a while, I stopped thinking. I was like, is this really the rock? So I asked. I said, is this really the spirit with the rocking horse? And you get the no. And I said, is this Ameline? Yep. So Ameline overpowers everything in this room at one mm. point or another. And I think it's just because she gets jealous and wants the attention again. She so wants the attention, yeah. It's 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 bizarre. It's interesting. You know, half these people – well, the people watching believe in the paranormal. But if I was telling this yeah. – 
Maury Povich or something. People are like, lock this guy out. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But see, that's the thing. I mean, and that's what I love about, about, you know, what we all do and, and being able to talk to like-minded people with this stuff, because we understand what you're saying and we get it. You know, it's, it's the normals that, that don't get us. And that's, that's their problem. Yeah. Um, is the way I look at it. I'm sorry. That's, that's their issue, not mine, but sure is. Um, but yeah, anyway, so, but no, that's awesome that you have a collection of haunted stuff. Um, mm -hmm. again, uh, we're based out of the Nickerson Sneed house. It's a, it's a haunted, uh, 1850s house that we're based out of. It's actually our lead psychic owns it. Um, and she's putting together a small uh, oddities and haunted um, type artifacts display type. Uh, what do you want to call that? Like a uh, oddity show, I guess, if you will, but yeah. at the house. So those people yeah. come and investigate and rent a place to investigate and all that stuff. They will also, you know, get an opportunity to learn about these artifacts and interact with some of these these cool artifacts. So she would be really interested to talk to you someday, I'm sure, about mm -hmm. uh, not only your journey but about your haunted artifacts because she just like really geeks out on that stuff like big time. So that's my end goal too. At some point, either a museum or somewhere that I can display these and have people come and interact with them, research them, and try to get answers because that's that's what it's all about. Uh, I got a couple comments I'm gonna throw up here. Um, oh yeah, Jan night Janice was watching that night. Okay, so she knows what, what you always what actually she was witness what you were talking about. Okay, mm -hmm. I try to keep up with the comments, but I also try to listen when we're talking here. So sometimes we miss them, we get enthralled in listening to our guests, and we forget to pop comments up on there. But uh, but yeah, Matt. So a um, couple of other quick questions because we're getting towards the end of the segment or end of the hour here. Um, you know, we can stay on a little bit longer if you want to talk, or we can end it right at the hour, but. Uh, a couple of questions we always ask, and you kind of already answered one of them, was your favorite location. I think you've kind of hit on what your current favorite location is. But if you could go anywhere in the world, if you could pick one location anywhere on the globe and, and get a week to go investigate it, where would it be and why? Pavalia Island, because you can't. <laughs> that's a great answer. That's the first time we've ever had that answer. That is a, that, that, a, that has been my number, one, number one on my bucket list since, uh, Christ, I think I saw that on Scariest Places on Earth. I think that was when I first got exposed to that like 20 some odd years ago. And I have been fascinated with that location ever since. And I will make it there someday. And I don't care if I have to swim there, I will get there. But that's, that's been number one for a long time. It's happening. So that goal is set. Mm -hmm. All right. So Al, Michelle, you want to throw a question out here as we get ready to wrap up things? Well, have you ever been down to Tennessee? <laughs> I went to Old South Pittsburgh this year back oh. in June. We did too. We, we yeah. did. When did we go? We went in August, didn't we? August. August yeah, we went I August. Yeah. yeah. I need to go back. It was a little quiet the night we were there, but we did all hear quite a lot of footsteps on the third floor when we were down on the second floor. And it definitely has a vibe and they do a great job down there. They're doing they such do. awesome work yeah. and the, all the volunteers are great. Um, I can't wait to go back there because we had, a, we had a really fun time that you night. Know, you know, if you go back to Old South, you got to do Hell's Bar Dam, which is 10 minutes away. I tried to go when we were down there and it wasn't open at the time because I don't know if it was a change of ownership or they were doing something different, but I couldn't get us there because I was trying. Yeah, we, no, we, we actually twice. went twice this year. What about Brushy Mountain? Have you been to Brushy Mountain Penitentiary? On my list. Haven't made it there. We've been there twice. We're good friends with the team that runs that place. Um, great people. End of the line paranormal. They're fantastic. Big, big friends of ours. We, we do a lot of co-ops with them because they're just, they're great people. Well, I might need to make a nice long weekend down in Tennessee with you guys next year then and hit these places up. Well, that's what I was going to say. you got a standing invitation to come investigate yeah. with us anytime you want. We'll bring you to the Nickerson Sneed, our home haunt. It uh, remains one of the most active places we've been. Uh, it's got a cool history. So standing invitation, man. Come down and join us. We'd love yeah. it. Yeah, That sounds awesome. I'm down. Wait a minute, what, Aaron's got a comment here, so I was going to pop that up there. Yes, I'm so so. Aaron lives in Scotland, and I'm going over there for uh, you know. As of now, I'm going there for New Year's Eve this year, and we're going to go to what is known to be the world's most haunted graveyard cemetery. I think it's probably a cemetery because I don't think there's a church on the property. But over there, you can go to graveyards and cemeteries in the middle of the night, not like here where you're not oh, allowed wow. to go. And she wow. was telling me today that people are so scared of the place that no one goes there. So I was like, we will. Yeah, I'll be That's there. Awesome. I'll sleep there, man. I can't wait to check it out. There's one. There's one in Louisville that I want to go to that nobody else will go to. No. <laughs> no. I'm out. I'm not. I don't want. Yeah, that's not my cup of tea. Take chance. I think Matt will go with you. Why don't you ask Matt to go? Matt yeah, will go with you. I, I get the go, sense that Matt will go. Is there is not one place I wouldn't go. 
That's all. Say, there you go, Al. Yeah. You got. You can go now. Yeah. I'm down. 50-50 chance of getting an attachment. There you go. You got that. <laughs> I'm a magnet for attachments. I've had so many at this point. I just add them to the list. <laughs> Awesome stuff. Hey, so Matt, what else you got coming up? You got any big events coming up? You got any, uh, can, you know, of course, COVID's got everything screwed up, but any online events, anything you can talk about or want to talk about? Uh, and then also, of course, get us the information and we'll, we'll be sure to share it out for you. Um, you know, we love putting that stuff out and sharing. Um, we're, we're a team that really does believe in para unity. I know a lot of people talk para unity, but we really do believe that the only way this community is ever going to advance is if we set aside ego and focus on actually trying to build and work with like-minded people. So when yeah. we find like-minded people, we resonate with them. Like we do everything we can to support and share their stuff. So while we got you on here, if you got anything coming up, we'd, we'd love to hear about it. Uh, next uh, next Saturday, the 12th, I'm a part of uh, my team and I are part of a live stream. It's a 36 hour live stream to raise awareness and funds for ALS. Awesome. And I keep forgetting where the hell that's going to be, but I'll be posting about it. I know that. And each hour is going to be a different group or team showcasing or focusing on something different. So there's teams all around the country. And I believe over in, in I think there's some in the UK too. I'm not 100% sure, but all over the place, people will be doing different experiments and things like that. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I think that's it for December. I'm trying to let I, – I went so balls to the wall this year that I, I said get to October, finish, and take a break. Now that I've taken a break for a month, I'm driving myself crazy because I need to ghost hunt. But I'm listening. I'm like, just <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Uh, and then my next my next event that I'll be at will be the Haunted Savannah Paracon at the end of February down in Savannah, Georgia, which will be a great time to get out of New England. So yes. fingers crossed COVID pisses off and we can do that with no issues. In March, I'm supposed to go out to Kansas to film a documentary. Oh, uh, what else we got? Uh, obviously, I've got Scotland for New Year's that I'm going to try to do some ghost hunting, which I'll be going live from my page in the cemetery. Fantastic! We'll watch out for that and share that stuff. For that'll sure. that'll be fun. And then, uh, yeah, next summer I've got. You're coming to Hawaii. Tennessee, you said. So I'm good. Yeah. I've, I've got to get to Tennessee. That's an easier <laughs> one to get to. I've got Detroit for the Detroit Six Precinct. I've got, I'm a part of a big event July 31st next year there couple of conventions sprinkled in there vulture city paracon next october that was postponed from this year and hopefully i'm going to try to get out to madcon and the new fci con as well awesome go where the road takes me absolutely um you know we uh put together a, a pretty big uh event called the expo that's supposed to be was supposed to happen in august and covid derailed it and it's now been pushed to april and I don't know what North Carolina is going to do, but I'm hoping we can still definitely have it in April, in April. So um, I know how that goes with the having to push schedules and move schedules and it, you know, it's affecting everybody. It's uh, it's been rough. It is. Ho hopefully we'll get that shit show behind us and, and move on. And that's I, don't, in, I, I have no other words for it. What'd you say? Oh, Michelle? I was just gonna say that's in Asheville, North Carolina it's in April. So that would be a good time to visit. Yeah, <laughs> I would be down for that. Yeah, the hexbo.com if you want to check it out. Um, it's uh, I sure will. We're doing so. Uh, but what, Al, you're going to ask the last famous question. I feel like Matt's going to have an interesting answer. So you oh, always God. love to ask the question of every guest. So I want to end on a funny note before yeah. we, we get off the air here. Um, so when you pass away, Matt, and you come back as a spirit, what are you going to be wearing? Your ghost outfit. Your ghost so, this is, so this is off the theory that we get to choose the outfit? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I would definitely like to come back in full Victorian era plague doctor. Oh, that's a good one. Mask that's another new one. Like all of it. Like completely yeah. like you, you, you want to be terrified to the, to the max degree. That's what's going to terrify you. That's me. <laughs> I'm going to haunt the hell out of every single person I've ever known in my life. <laughs> and just torment the shit out of them. I, hey, I like it. I, I kind of have the, my thing was out for a long time. I was going like the Grim Reaper because it's so overdone that people would kind of think it's a joke. And then it would be, they would be shocked when they saw that, you know, I was really this spirit dressed as the Grim Reaper <laughs> screwing with them. So that was kind of my thing. Mm -hmm. um, Al, what, tell them what yours is. I mean, I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's a classic. <laughs> well, I said, if, if I was going to come back and scare people, I would just be naked. <laughs> you know, naked and afraid, new meaning. There you go. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, you know, everybody's got Michelle. What's yours again? I, I can't remember. Well, I said I wanted to be comfortable and I'd probably be in yoga pants or something, but right. <laughs> I'd yeah. probably be that woman in white. I'd probably be the woman in white. 
scary. Just because it's cliche, right? Everybody yeah. would think it's a joke and then you could, you know, freak them out. So see, <laughs> I, I think we all on the same page with that. Just want to kind of screw with people. But Matt, I've had scroll on the bottom here real quick. I've had uh, at Warner Paranormal Explorers. So yep. people can hit you up there on Facebook. And I've had at Matt Warner. Is that correct? Or yeah, I should well, I asked you that an are. hour ago, but I forgot. Yeah. At Warner Paranormal Explorers is good for uh, Instagram, Facebook. Most of that's on Twitter. There's a amount of I don't even use Twitter, so don't waste your time. There's nothing there. Me neither. Uh, <laughs> it's it's I just I send all the crap through all of them at the same time. But the Facebook is my main hub, and then the Instagram is where I put all the photos that I do on my investigations. Matt Warner is my personal page. And uh, I'm on social media far too often, so I'm always available. And I love interacting with the fans and, and the followers and the, the like-minded people in the paranormal. And I love collaborating. I did so much of that Absolutely. this year. I can't wait to do more next year. So please reach out. Let's do some fun stuff together. Yeah. Absolutely. Man, Matt, it's been a blast having you on here. I'm going to get ready to shoot the outro. If you'll stick around for a minute, we'll wrap things up. Uh, but I will make sure also to put that stuff in the description on both YouTube and it's already in the uh, Facebook event so people can keep up with you. And guys, please go out and follow these guys, follow uh, Warner Paranormal Explorers, see what Matt's into. Uh, he's a fun guy and I've really enjoyed talking with him tonight. Um, and again, I really appreciated him stepping up and helping us when we were trying to throw together that last minute thing. Cause actually the, the funny thing with that, Matt, that really wasn't planned. We were originally just going to have Jay on there again, talking about the IDC device, which I happen to really believe in his work. And I love his, his direct link. Uh, we love ours. Uh, we've had it now for about a month and a half and mm -hmm. we've used it six or seven mm -hmm. locations and it's, it's phenomenal. But we were just going to talk a little bit more about that. And then he's like, hey, well, I'm going to be at the Conjuring House. Let's try to turn it into something. So him and I got brainstorming. And I think our idea was bigger than our capability that night. So uh, <laughs> it was a nice idea. Do what? It was a good idea. Yeah, I think, just, like you said, with the proper planning and the right channels, it could have worked out really, really well. I, I loved being a part of it. It was unique. It hadn't been yeah, done. it was fun. It was something different. So I just wanted to thank you again for that. And I know I did earlier, but I just think that's a stand-up thing you did, and we appreciate it. But, guys, make sure you jump over here and check out what they're into. Follow what they do. Uh, Matt, I hope you'll come on with us again sometime. We'll sit down and talk, and Absolutely. We'll, we'll talk weird stuff and the paranormal and all that good stuff. But, guys, uh, we're done for tonight. We will be back. We won't be here next week because next week is our uh, private Yule celebration. So we'll be at the Nickerson's Need with our team, spending some power family time. Um, and then we'll – probably back the week after that. And I think January, we've got several shows lined up for January and we're booking stuff into February. So uh, we'll be back. Uh, like I said, in two weeks, guys, thanks for tuning in. Make sure you like, share, share this out. Let people see it. Let people see what Matt's into and what we're into. And you guys, as always have a great night and always seek the truth. Everybody. Let me find the outro. I should have had that ready. Thank you.